And, of course, we're getting some incredible new images from a new astronomical observatory, home to the largest digital camera in the world. You're looking at one of the very first test images from the biggest, most powerful digital camera ever made, period. It lives at the Verici Rubin Observatory, perched high on a Chilean mountaintop called Cerro Pachon, nearly 9,000 feet above sea level. And even though this is just a warm-up shot, a tiny glimpse of its full power, it already contains discoveries. This single frame, a composite of hundreds of individual shots, reveals millions of stars, thousands of asteroids, and even a supernova that nobody had noticed for weeks. But to understand how we got here, we need to rewind the clock. Two decades ago, this entire observatory was little more than an idea. It began in the early 2000s, when a group of astronomers walked into a conference room, likely at the SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory, armed with a dry erase marker. They were wrestling with a fundamental problem. The universe is a chaotic, dynamic place. But our view of it was mostly static. For a century, Astronomy has been like trying to take a family photo in a thunderstorm. You open the shutter for a long time, hope nothing moves, close it, and pray the image isn't a blurry mess. In the universe moves. Asteroids streak across the solar system. Stars explode in violent supernova, and entire galaxies collide and devour each other. We were missing the movie, only catching scattered still frames. The astronomers sketched something impossible on the whiteboard, a camera the size of a small car attached to a telescope that could move with unprecedented speed. It would be an instrument designed not just to see faint and far, but to see wide and fast. It would need to scan the entire visible southern sky every three nights, creating a decade-long time-lapse of the cosmos. They called it the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope or LSST. It started as a concept for a dark matter telescope, but quickly grew in scope. The idea was so audacious, so ambitious, that it was ranked as the number one priority for ground-based astronomy in the 2010 Dicadal Survey, a report that sets the agenda for the entire field. Private funding from software billionaires Charles and Lisa Simoni and Bill Gates helped get the mirrors built, and soon after, with federal backing from the National Science Foundation and the Department of Energy, the impossible doodle began its journey to reality. Yesterday, that doodle woke up, blinked, and took this picture. So what does it take to build a camera that can photograph the entire sky? If you've ever tried to snap the Milky Way with your phone, you know the frustration. A tiny sensor, a narrow view, and endless digital noise. Now swap that phone for a detector so wide it could capture an area of the sky 45 times larger than the full moon in a single shot. That's the incredible leap we just made. At the heart of the LSST camera is its focal plane, a mosaic of 189 individual CCD sensors, each capturing 16 megapixel images. These sensors are grouped into 21 units called RAFs, which were painstakingly assembled at Brookhaven National Laboratory and shipped to SLAC for installation. Combined, they create a single, flat image surface with a staggering 3.2 gigapixels. To give you a sense of scale, it would take more than 378 4K ultra-high-definition TVs to display just one of its images at full size. These sensors are thinner than a human hair, and the focal plane they create is almost perfectly flat, with variations no larger than a tenth of a human hair's width. To keep digital noise from corrupting the images, the entire assembly is housed in a vacuum chamber and cryogenically cooled to a frigid minus 100 degrees Celsius, minus 148 degrees Fahrenheit. But a sensor that big needs massive lenses. The front lens is the largest of its kind ever made a 1.6-meter piece of flawless optical glass. Polished at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, its surface is so smooth that if you scaled it to the size of the United States, the biggest bump would be no taller than a nickel. This lens, along with two others, 
focuses the light collected by the telescope's mirrors onto the giant sensor array. The camera also holds a high-speed filter-changing carousel. It can swap between five of six different color filters, spanning the spectrum from near-ultraviolet to near-infrared in under two minutes, allowing the observatory to capture a multicolor view of the sky as it scans. The whole assembly weighs nearly 3,000 kilograms, 6,600 pounds, and is the size of a small SUV. It's an engineering marvel designed to take one 15-second exposure every 20 seconds, relentlessly, for 10 years straight. Building the camera was one thing. Getting it to its final destination was another. In May 2024, the $168 million camera, complete after two decades of work, was ready to leave the SLAC clean room in California. First, it was mounted to a custom shipping frame and wrapped in electrostatic discharge material to protect it from moisture. The entire frame was then loaded into a 20-foot shipping container, modified with special insulation and hardware to clamp it directly to the container's struts. The container was bristling with sensors, GPS trackers, data loggers for temperature and humidity, and accelerometers to monitor every vibration and jolt. A sneeze could void the warranty. The team had done a full dress rehearsal in 2021, shipping a mass simulator of the same size and weight to Chile to map out the risks. But this was the real thing. The camera traveled on an air ride truck to the San Francisco airport, where it was loaded onto a chartered Boeing 747 cargo plane for the 10-hour flight to Santiago, Chile. Two engineers rode along in jump seats, their job to personally oversee the loading and unloading. After landing at 4.10 a.m., the convoy began the final leg of the journey. It drove to the base of Cerro Pachon, where it began the slow, five-hour climb up a winding 35-kilometer dirt road to the summit. There, the Simoni Survey Telescope was waiting. Named for its key private donors, the 8.4-meter telescope is itself a marvel. Its unique three-mirror design provides that enormous field of view, while its compact structure allows it to swing across the sky with incredible speed moving from one patch of sky to the next in just a few seconds. Installation took weeks as teams carefully hoisted the camera and bolted it into the heart of the telescope, aligning the sensors to within microns, all while hoping the harsh Andean winter didn't throw a 120 km per hour tantrum. Then came the moment of truth, first light. In a series of engineering tests, Astronomers pointed the telescope at the sky. What came back was anything but boring. One of the first targets was the Virgo Cluster, a collection of galaxies 54 million light years away. A single image captured a stunning 10 million galaxies. That's just 0.05% of the 20 billion galaxies Rubin is expected to image over its 10 year survey. Another image, a composite of 678 separate exposures taken over seven hours, shows the Trifid and Lagoon Nebulae. In visible light, they are beautiful clouds of hydrogen. In Rubin's deep, multi-filtered view, it will be able to detect a 140-meter asteroid as far away as the main asteroid belt. It is predicted to find the missing 90% of these potentially hazardous objects within the first five years of its survey. If something is on a collision course with Earth, we will have years or even decades of warning instead of months, giving us precious time to act. Second, weighing the invisible. Dark matter and dark energy together make up 95% of the cosmos, yet we know almost nothing about them. Vera Rubin, the observatory's namesake, provided the first definitive evidence for dark matter by observing that galaxies were spinning too fast to hold themselves together with visible matter alone. The Rubin Observatory will honor her legacy by creating the largest map of dark matter ever made. It will catalog billions of galaxies and measure how their light is subtly bent and distorted by the gravity of invisible matter between them and us. This effect 
called weak gravitational lensing, allows astronomers to work backward and create a 3D map of the unseen cosmic web, revealing the filaments of dark matter that scaffold the universe. The very first images already show hints of these subtle distortions. Collecting 60 petabytes of data is one challenge. Processing and sharing it is another. The data pipeline is a masterpiece of logistics. It begins on the mountaintop, where a preliminary analysis happens in near real time. This initial processing must identify anything that has changed or moved. Within 60 seconds of an image being taken, the system will issue up to 10 million alerts to the worldwide astronomical community. Anyone, from professional astronomers to dedicated amateurs, can subscribe to these alerts and hunt for the next interstellar comet or exploding star. From the summit, the data rockets over 8,000 kilometers via high-speed fiber optic cables to the main data center at SLAC in California. Copies are also sent to centers in France and Japan for redundancy. There, a more intensive annual reprocessing will occur, using the latest algorithms to refine the data and stack images to create ever deeper views of the universe. Critically, the LSST science pipelines are open source and the data will be made available to the entire scientific community, a radically democratic approach to big science. Of course, a project of this scale is not without its gremlins. Moisture could frost the lenses in the Chilean winter. A software bug could mislabel an asteroid. An earthquake could jostle the telescope's perfect alignment. The team has run simulations for every nightmare scenario they can imagine. But as they say, the universe is always creative. Behind the terabytes of data and tons of titanium are hundreds of scientists and engineers who have spent entire careers on this gamble. It's a collaboration of institutions across the globe, managed by Aura, Celes, and NORLAB, with funding from the NSF and DOE. The director of the observatory, Dr. Jelko Ivezic, has been with the project since those first whiteboard sketches in the early 2000s. When asked what he felt when the first photons finally hit the sensors, he laughed and said, relief, followed immediately by terror. We now have 10 million things to do. When the camera was completed, he stated, we will soon start producing the greatest movie of all time and the most informative map of the night sky ever assembled. The Rubin Observatory isn't just a bigger telescope or a better camera. It's a new kind of scientific infrastructure. It doesn't just answer one specific question. It becomes the platform upon which thousands of future questions will be asked and answered. Two decades ago, the LSST camera was a stack of PowerPoint slides and a doodle on a whiteboard. Today, it is a living instrument that is already rewriting what we thought we knew from its very first test shots. Over the next 10 years, it will scan, catalog, and reveal more of our universe than all previous telescopes in human history combined. If you ever wondered what it felt like to be alive when Galileo first turned a simple spyglass toward the heavens, congratulations, you're there. The images we've seen are just the opening credits. The main feature starts now.